Now, I just picked up this P51H from Modelsvit. It's in 140A scale. After I had reviewed their 109C3 last week and, it, and found it to be freaking awesome, I decided, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and buy this thing too. Um, I like the P51. Uh, it's built a lot. You know, a lot of modelers build it. Most of the time it's in the D model. Some people build you know, a good bit of C and B models out there, but uh, not many good kits of the P51H have been around. So uh, when I saw this one, I figured I'd better snag it and give it a look. And I figured, hey, why not uh, go ahead and make a video? We could check it out together. Hey, I'm Chad. Welcome back to Flying S Models. I appreciate you uh, coming back to the channel and uh, hanging out with me while we check out some more models. And let's go ahead and get the process stuff out of the way. You know I've got to mention the subscribe button. I've also got to tell you to click the notifications bell. That way as I make some more videos, you guys will see them when I put them online. So uh, let's go ahead and check this kit out together. First off, the box art, pretty decent. Nice little painting here of a P-51H in Texas Air National Guard markings. Uh, pretty colorful, uh, red spinner, red wing tips, a little yellow on the tail and around the canopy. Um, let's see what else you got. Looks like we've got some nice markings here. Um, Texas Air National Guard, Massachusetts Air National Guard with lots of yellow, uh, New Hampshire Air National Guard, and I think this is probably a what-if scheme um, in RAF service. I don't believe the P-51H really ever served with the RAF, although the P-51B and C and D did. The other side's got some computer-generated drawings. Show, it looks like it's going to come with fuel tanks and rockets. And I like the look of the etched color here, which means we're probably going to have a photo etch fret inside uh, to add some details. So let's see what's on the inside. Okay, I admit I cheated a little bit. I did open the box and I took the plastic out of the, or I took the sprues out of the plastic bags. All right, I'm guilty, but I haven't really checked it out much. I figured, like I said, we'll do that together. Now, for those of you who've been tuning into the channel, you probably know I love building models. I like them to look relatively accurate, but to be honest with you, I don't spend a whole lot of time comparing them to plans and making sure that every panel line and rivet is in the right spot. Uh, to me, if it looks good um, when I'm done, or for that matter, if it looks good on the sprues, I'm gonna build it. And then if it looks good when I'm done, I'm gonna be pretty dang happy. So, uh, so let's just take a look at what we've got here. Uh, the surface detail is really nice. Um, looks like some nice panel lines, some nice rivet detail. You can see right away the difference between a P51 H wing and the D wing. The ding, the, the ding, the D wing had a little uh, angled uh, front here on the leading edge where the landing gear was. Uh, the H is a straight wing because they made some modifications to the landing gear. Looks like we've got separate elevators along with the horizontal stabilizer on this sprue. And here's the bottom wing sprue. Again, nice detail, some really good rivet detail right in here. You can see the difference in the wheel bay shape. If you're familiar with the P51D, um, you would know that it is a good bit different. Um, and it looks like some nice little cutouts here where the navigation lights would be. Sorry, had to move that box out of the way. That way you can maybe see the sprue a little bit better. Uh, here's a fuselage halves. Again, really nice detail. These are actually really thin molded. The surface detail is really nice. Rivet detail is, is really, really uh, fine. Uh, you can tell here also the difference in an H versus a D. If you're uh, familiar with it or not familiar with it, uh, the D had a shorter vertical stabilizer, probably would have been cut off about right here. And uh, an H is slightly deeper here in the mid body of the fuselage. Some really cool detail around the exhaust stubs. I'm assuming that the exhaust stacks will go on the inside there. Let's take a look. Yeah, it looks like there's a recess here to install those in. Good, tail wheel detail is pretty nice. And it looks like from these recessed areas that there's gonna be some separate sidewall detail that'll go in here. So that, that's probably gonna be pretty cool. So after the main sprues here, there's a bunch of smaller sprues. Here's the, what looks like the cockpit sprue. Yep, here's the sidewalls, really nice detail there. Uh, let's see, instrument panel, eh, so-so. I'm not sure what's gonna happen there. Hopefully there's a photo etched piece for that. Uh, cockpit floor is nice. 
the seat and seat back those look really good uh, it looks like some rudder pedals here uh, it looks like some nice detail for the cockpit the sprue has the prop the spinner and the back plate along with the uh, ventral uh, radiator pieces and the chin intake prop I'm not sure about that I'll have to check it I will now I'm going to be a little bit geeky check it against some drawings I have that thing looks a little bit paddle like but man that could be accurate I'm, I'm just not all that familiar with it this sprue looks like it's got a wing spar that probably forms the wheel well uh, landing gear which look nicely molded I don't see much in the way of a seam line some pretty nice actuator details here the main wheels looks nice looks like here are the parts for the flaps and the ailerons as well as the main gear wells those are also nicely molded and lastly with regards to the gray sprue pieces it looks like the ordnance which includes some fuel tanks and some rockets also everything looks nicely molded don't see any flash evident anywhere so there's one clear sprue looks like it has the canopy in both a single piece and a two piece molded i like the look of the windscreen things look really thin and nice and clear and there's the navigation light sprues we can paint those up and put those on and then it looks like a gun sight here here's the etched sprue i figured we'd have oh that thank goodness there is the instrument panel there so that's going to not go nicely on the sort of plain plastic panel looks like it's a two-part job looks like some other fine details including some uh, straps for the belt and other odds and ends what looks like it's probably for both the cockpit and maybe a few on the exterior the decals come on two sheets the first is the colored markings with all the insignias they look nice and thin and in register the second sheet has all the cereals and stencils they also look really nice they should go down well so let's check out the instruction sheet it's really colorful same picture that's on the box art a little bit of painting guide here some instructions on uh, the flag notes um, parts layout etch set decals what looks like masks so that's pretty cool um, both for the inside and outside of the canopy as well as the wheel wells overall the construction looks quite conventional starting off with the cockpit lots of details some great instructions you build up the tub and then install this tub inside of the fuse halves um, everything looks really straightforward and nice and simple looks like some pretty nice gear assembly detail as, as well as the main wheel wells the rest of the steps and then looks like some stencil guide as well as several very colorful markings looks like three that i know are legit the texas air national guard the massachusetts air national guard and the new hampshire air national guard the last one is this um raf camouflage scheme like i said i think this is fictional but i'm not sure so i'm gonna have to do a little research on that it's pretty cool i'm a big fan of camo but uh I'm not sure I want to do a fictional bird. Now, like I said, I don't get too geeked out over the accuracy down to the particular panel line or down to the millimeter. But I figure for those that might, why don't I go ahead and just check this out as compared to the drawings that are in AJ Press's uh, monograph here uh, that has uh, drawings for the P51H. Now, I'm pretty sure these are 148th scale. I'm not going to go ahead and make a copy or cut this from my book, but I'm going to just lay them up here for just general comparison and just see overall shape. Yeah, actually, it looks really good as compared to the AJ drawings. A little bit of a difference here in the um, vertical stabilizer and rudder area, but overall looks really dang close to me now let's just check the one of the wings and see here I'll line it up overall that looks really really close yep I'd say good enough for government work so I mentioned that prop being a little bit uh, paddle like to me I'm not sure whether or not the tips are tapered or not it's really hard to see I don't have a front view in this uh, publication so I'm going to have to do a little more research on it. 
Uh, it looks like the overall dimension looks to be about right if I compare it to the kit part, but I can't tell shape-wise whether or not it is. So I may just go ahead and trust models of it on this one and build it as is. So I figured while we're tooling around in the book, I can show those of you who may not be familiar with the difference between the P51D and H. Um, the P51H was actually a hot rod of sorts. It was a lightened version of the P51 to help increase performance and uh, overall top speed. I think the top speed of this Joker was, I don't know, somewhere around 470, 475 miles an hour. So pretty much a hot rod of the P51 series. But you can see here's a regular P51D. You can see how the ventral radiator scoop actually curves up right here. Um, you can also see a, a deeper chin here and there's a difference in the landing gear cover design here as as well as the wing leading edge that i mentioned now if i take a look at the p51h you can kind of see the difference the ventral radiator here is uh, doesn't have a really sharp slope it kind of just gradually goes up to meet the uh, aft part of the fuselage the tail is slightly taller a little pointier and then it's kind of hard to see here but you can see the straight leading edge of the wing and the landing gear cover also you can see a little difference in the overall uh, chin here of the forward fuselage so there we go there's models vit p51h mustang in 148 scale looks like a really good kit i'm glad i bought it i was super impressed with the 109 that i just reviewed but I think this one actually is a, is a little bit better. And I was going to start building the 109, but I may have to throw this one on the bench first. And uh, I'll make sure to put up a video build for uh, you guys as well. But how about doing me a favor? I'm kind of struggling with how best or what, what type of format to use for the video build. Do you guys want a, a quick build? Do you want to see, you know, kind of step by step? Do you just want to see some still pictures as I go along? Uh, put in a video slideshow um, do you want to see more of the process and the techniques that i use more talking less talking all those kinds of things i just kind of want to be a little bit more engaging and kind of meet the needs of the subscribers so uh, i'll leave it up to you you just let me know what you want to see in the way of a build review uh, do that by leaving me some comments here and uh, we'll try to meet everyone's needs. Not always possible, but I'll do the best I can. So appreciate you guys taking a look at this kit with me. I hope that you guys like the look of it as much as I do. And uh, stay tuned for that build video. I appreciate you tuning in.